day to you all. Today we are going to talk about head and neck cancers. There are different types of head and neck cancers because there are different sites in the head and neck where cancer can originate. You can have cancer in the nose, in the nasal cavity, behind the nose, that area is called nasopharynx, behind the mouth, that area is called oropharynx. In the mouth also, there are various areas you can have cancers, like the tongue, inside of the cheek, the base of the tongue. And also, you can have uh, developed cancer into a voice box, and also the area where uh, the gullet or the esophagus starts, that area is called the hypopharynx. So, first, I'm going to talk about nasopharyngeal cancer. Nasopharynx means this area, where the air goes from the nose to the back of the nose, this area is called nasopharynx. And as you can imagine, this is not a commonly seen area in any kind of examination. Like you go to a physician, this area is not routinely examined. Even if you go to an ENT doctor, until unless you have some specific symptom, this area may not be examined in a routine checkup. So what are the symptoms of head and nasopharyngeal cancer? Nasopharynx is this area behind the nose. Since this area is not routinely checked in any ENT examination or in a routine EMF checkup, if you go for a checkup, this is not easily diagnosed. The patient may have this nose block which may be slowly progressing over the months or years. So if a, something has to block your back of the nose, it has to like, at least between 2 to 3 centimeters in big, big, uh, big in size. So that's when the patient starts having nasal block. Especially when, you, when a person is lying down, the patient may not be able to breathe. So a loud snoring or difficulty in breathing when lying down may be a symptom of nasopharyngeal cancer. And especially this cancer is seen in elderly which, who are above 60 to 65 years of age and uh, the, uh, more commonly seen in men than women. So sometimes the nasopharyngeal cancer, before it is uh, uh, becomes bigger in the back of the nose, it can it, it have lymph node enlargement. The cancer cells can migrate to the lymph node in the neck and present as lymph node swelling in both the sides of the neck. Since the nasopharynx is a structure in the midline of your head, the lymph nodes can go to either side of the neck. So any lymph node enlargement in an elderly patient which is not reducing more than 2-3 to three weeks, you have to suspect this. Another symptom is patient may have come with reduced fear. So what happens, nasopharynx has a, uh, is the back of the nose that also houses the eustachian tube endings. Eustachian tube is a tube that connects the ear to the nose. This tube ends in the back of the nose at the region of the nasopharynx. When the tumor enlarges and becomes big, the end of the eustachian tube, which is at the back of the nose, may get blocked. So this causes the fluid to connect behind the eardrum, that is called serosotitis media. So these patients may present with a hearing loss, which is due to fluid collected behind their eardrum. And if the patient has this and multiple medical treatment have been unsuccessful, then we have to suspect this. What causes nasopharyngeal cancer? This nasopharyngeal cancer was not very commonly seen in India. It was actually initially discovered in China, in some provinces of China and it, the, the, it has been said that the people who eat a lot of dried fish dried fish contains a compound called nitrosamine which causes the changes in the back of the nose skin which can lead to this nasopharyngeal cancer and also there is a virus called Epstein-Barr virus which, can also, which has also been linked to nasopharyngeal cancer so these two can be the cause of nasopharyngeal cancer in Indian population generally uh, we see uh, we don't see that much of a dried fish intake but in our population also we see the nasopharyngeal cancer this may test positive for nitrosamine so they may test positive for Epstein-Barr virus but routinely these tests are not done because they are genetic tests how do we diagnose nasopharyngeal Nasopharyngeal cancer is suspected in elderly people, mainly men, more than women, presenting with nasal obstruction and a lot of lymph nodes in both the sides of the neck, and also fluid behind the eardrum, which is not responding to any medical treatment. So, how do we diagnose this? Your ENT doctor will examine the back of the nose through a device called endoscope, which will be put through the nostril into the back of the nose. This shows them if there is a tumor, there is a tumor will be present in the back of the nose, which needs to be biopsied. Biopsy involves taking a small piece out of the tumor and sending it for examination under the microscope. This diagnoses the cancer, and next stage after the diagnosis is staging the disease. Diagnosis tells you what is the type of the cancer. Staging tells you the extent of the cancer. 
How do we determine the extent of the cancer? We can either, either do a CT scan of the nose or CT scan of the nose with chest. This was the conventional method earlier. But nowadays we have a device called PET scan which involves a whole body scan and uh, it covers from head to toe the, your whole body scan. And if a tumor is present, we, we determine what, is, what size is the tumor, how big it is, what all structures it is involving locally. And also, if it is spread to the lymph nodes, how big are the lymph nodes? Are the lymph nodes mobile or they, are they uh, very big and they fixed to the structures in the neck? These data will help the doctor to determine your treatment. The tumor extent and the extent of the spread will form the basis for your treatment plan. How do we treat cancer of the mesopharynx? We treat cancer of mesopharynx by giving radiation therapy and chemotherapy. In stage 1 and stage 2 mesopharyngeal cancers, that means the tumor has not come out of the mesopharynx itself, we use only radiation therapy or sometimes in the stage 2, sometimes even we can do chemotherapy. But in higher stages, you have to use radiation therapy with chemotherapy. Usually, surgery is not the preferred form of treatment in this cancer because the uh, access to the area is difficult before the invention of endoscopy and radiation gives as good results as surgery in the mesopharyngeal region. But in cases which are not responding to radiation or when the tumor has come back after many years of radiation, surgery may become an option.